What's going on guys? So today's a pretty special day on the channel. Uh, we just went to Tractor Supply and picked up this really cool compact Cub Cadet LT42B lawn tractor. This thing is pretty cool, but there's a story to this and I wanna share it with you. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so as most of you who follow this channel know, we already have two giant zero turns. We have a Toro Z-Master 2000 right here, commercial mower, 60-inch deck, or maybe a 62-inch deck. I think it's a 60. And then we have our Skag Cheetah 2, also a commercial mower, but this is a big boy commercial mower. This is like one size from the biggest, baddest one that Skag makes. The Cheetah 2 61-inch cutting deck has like a 38-horsepower Kawasaki on it. This thing is absolutely insane, but so is that. So a lot of people are going to ask, why do we have this Cub Cadet little compact tractor mower combo because you know we have these other mowers why would we get something like this now if you want to know what classification of mower this falls under i would absolutely say on the upper end of a residential tractor like this but on the lower end of possibly prosumer but i don't even think it's even close to that honestly uh, certainly not commercial grade uh, the deck on it you can absolutely tell is just a stamped really 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 thin deck I mean, the material on this deck, it's probably like a 20-gauge deck. It may even be thinner than that. I don't know. Um, it's a 42-inch wide deck, so it's significantly narrower than these two mowers. And that's going to kind of clue you off a little bit on why we have something like this. But it's even more for a practical purpose people might not know about. So this is the LT42B. It's got a 19-horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine on it. So 19... 100 series is what they call it. It's got some really good looking LED headlights, super aggressive front end to it. And the main reason we got this honestly is because sometimes I have uh, I have my father-in-law come out here and he likes to mow. I mean, he has no experience on a zero turn. It's just one of those tractors that kind of scares him a little bit. You know, he's an older gentleman and he just does not feel comfortable on zero turns because zero turns are very quick. They're very sudden and you can accidentally do something that could really hurt you quickly. Now, if you don't know what I mean, if you're on a zero turn, either one of these, and I go up to a tree that has a branch coming out right here, and I want to get under it. So typically you'll go and get the front end of it right here underneath that branch. But what ends up happening is you have to then be very careful to stop and pull yourself back from that branch. And if you're not paying attention, if you don't have experience, if you're just not careful, you could accidentally push yourself forward. And you can imagine how grotesque a situation you could fall under if the branch essentially hits you in the neck. A lot of people have gotten hurt on zero turns because they get themselves into situations because these things are so maneuverable, they're so agile, they're so quick that you could actually hurt yourself. So he does not feel comfortable on these mowers, and because he doesn't feel comfortable on them, I don't feel comfortable with him on them. So I've, I've trained him a little bit on how to use them. He's followed me around the yard, but because he has to pay so close attention to how he's operating it, he doesn't really keep an eye on where the edge of the, the actual deck is, and there's other things that just kind of make him feel anxious and not necessarily safe when he's on one of these. And I don't want to put him in a situation where, you know, he could find himself in an unsafe situation that could hurt himself or possibly property, but more importantly himself. I just don't want to find, you know, if I leave the property, I come back and there's been an unfortunate accident because, you know, he already told me he doesn't trust himself on these, and I put him on one of these. He loves to mow the grass, though, so this kind of made sense. Paid for it out of pocket, uh, went to Tractor Supply, and actually I researched a bunch of these online, looked at Lowe's, Home Depot. I had a budget between $2,500 or $2,000 and $2,500. That's really all I wanted to spend. I didn't want to go over $2,500. This was $2,300, $2,399, I think, and it fell right into that the comfortable category. It has better reviews than any of the Craftsman units that I saw or any of the lower-end John Deere units that I saw and the Husqvarna's. I mean, it, it actually has pretty dang good reviews. LED headlights on it. It's a comfortable seat. Super, super easy to use. Has like a two-and-a-half-gallon fuel tank on it. Um, and he's not really going to be mowing a lot out here. We do the main mowing with the zero turns. And my father comes out here, he helps me do it. But my father-in-law loves to help out and he, he wants to actively mow some parts. So there's some areas of grass out here, like around trees and, you know, in between things that this will fit 
that those mowers won't. So this is actually a necessary tool for us unless we want to use like the push mower that we have to get back there. And this makes a lot more sense, especially for areas of the yard that are further away. What's also nice about it is the fact that it has the little loop here on the back so we can hook the wagon to it. You can pull the wagon around, load it up with leaves, debris, things like that. And we can use this thing almost like a mini tractor. So that's a really nice feature. Another feature is just the fact that this gives me another tool to be able to move trash cans down to the curb, you know, different things like that. And I can get additional people on this that takes minimal training versus those which take quite a bit more training. And you have to really be comfortable with a zero turn mower in order to operate it effectively. I think most people could probably learn how to be relatively proficient with one of these after a couple hours of usage. But something like this, you know, 30 minutes of training on something like this and someone's gonna feel like an expert, which is really nice. Now, we got all sorts of controls here. Let's go over them real quick. This is our blade engagement. This right here is our deck height. It's actually a really smooth operation to raise or lower the deck. You have from four inches all the way down to one inch. Over here is your ignition. It has electronic start, of course. It is a carburetor on it. So you have your choke. When you go up top, you basically go to your rabbit and then past it up here. And now you're in your choke. You open up your choke. Um, fuel tank right here. I love the fact that I can see my fuel tank just by popping it open. That is super cool. And you can see all your fuel just instantly. So there's no question on how full you are. The Toro, the big commercial Z-Master we have behind us is actually pretty dang difficult to see how much fuel is left in the unit because of how they put the fuel tank and where it's at. Um, and there's no dedicated fuel gauge. You simply have this little slit where you see the side of the tank and you have to kind of guess where your fuel is if you can see through it. Might actually be in this space right here. See here. Yep, there's your air filter. Pretty easy to get to. I do like the cartridge style filters that come on the big commercial mowers. Again, the EX1900 uh, engine in this thing. Pretty dang cool. I mean, it's pretty quick too, to be honest with you. I was pretty surprised. It's your forward, your rocket backward to go backward. And then it has a hydrostatic transmission, which is also really nice. Back here is how you disengage it so you can push the mower around if you need to. Think super lightweight. That mower weighs about 1,200 pounds. That mower weighs about 1,600 pounds. Actually, a little more than that. This one weighs like 300 pounds. It's super, super lightweight. And it hauls around pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest. Plus, if you're shooting content and you're sitting on a mower, it's a lot easier to have a steering wheel versus levers like that. But let me show you how this thing works. We'll get on it. We have to make sure the brake is engaged, the parking brake. Go ahead and start up. It's actually pretty nice. go around the street. Check this out. Very, very maneuverable. Let's see if I can make a U-turn in here. awesome what do you guys think you know under three grand under twenty five hundred dollars to be honest with you uh super maneuverable i'm i'm actually blown away by the maneuverability of this thing i did not think it would turn as aggressively as it does of course not as aggressive as a zero turn which can literally you know turn with you know just sitting still in one spot but you don't tear up the yard as much when you turn with this because you don't have that that tire that's just dragging but yeah, what do you think? Leave a comment below. I'd love to know your thoughts. Again, I purchased it with my own money. Uh, there was no sponsorship. There was no collaboration here, nothing like that. It was just me wanting to get something a little smaller, a little safer for someone who's not familiar with zero turns. And uh, that would still give the ability for him to come out here and mow the grass when he wants to mow the grass. Because if you're a man, 
there's probably some part of you that likes mowing grass. So anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.